horrific scene in there. There is blood everywhere. Twelve people are dead after a 28-year-old Marine Corps veteran opened fire early this morning at the Borderline Bar and Grill in Thousand Oaks, California. Among the dead, Sheriff's Sergeant Ron Helis, who tried to stop the massacre. Helis was just a year away from retirement. The shooter is Ian David Long. He died by suicide at the scene. He also had a run-in with authorities last April. Mental health counselors were called, suspecting PTSD. Long did serve in the war in Afghanistan. 307. According to the Gun Violence Archive, this is the 307th mass shooting on the 311th day of the year. That's almost a shooting every day in 2018. Really hard to absorb there. And there is a groundbreaking effort underway in St. Paul to understand the motivations behind mass shootings and the only research of its kind in the U.S. They have the hope that this research drives conversation and prevention. All of a sudden, you hear like the, the bang bang of the gunshot. We're just trying to get out. We just tried to take cover. How have we arrived here when another public place becomes a site of horror and bloodshed? When the news alerts don't surprise us? When we don't even go a week between mass shootings anymore? It's getting exhausting. You know, we've now had three in two weeks, so we're in the middle of what we would call a cluster. And you kind of have to remind yourself to stay horrified by it. So Dr. Jillian Peterson, criminal justice professor and psychologist, focuses on the victims. Reading their stories, looking at their faces. The inspiration for a first-of-its-kind database of mass shooters created right here at Hamlin University with a counterpart and a team of student researchers. The names and crimes of 155 shooters over the past 50 years are coded and categorized. You see violence goes up during times where people don't have trust. The database searches for commonalities between 60 facets of the shooter's life history. So anything from trauma, substance abuse, mental health history, role models, family dynamics. But the link Peterson is searching for? One big finding was that there was no pattern, right? So, um, and as a researcher, that's a little disappointing. But what we did find is that it was the number of risk factors people had that was pretty consistent. That it was not just mental illness or not just being bullied or not just traumatic childhood. It was sort of slow build of things over time. And then there was usually kind of an immediate trigger. So whether it was a breakup or losing the job, something that kind of pushed someone over the edge. One surprise, shooters are often suicidal before planning a massacre. Sort of angry suicides. Mm -hmm. um, another finding was how common military service was in someone's background, and that was the case in the shooting today again. And with sadly a list of cases piling up in the database, answers may still lie in these pages. A new $300,000 grant from the Department of Justice will now allow Peterson to peer into the minds of these shooters. So we have funding to go and interview five living mass shooters who are currently incarcerated across the country. Um, and then we'll also be going to the communities where those mass shootings occurred and interviewing people in the community. You have to be willing to hear these stories. And I think it's hard because sometimes it sounds like, you know, you're humanizing people who have done something awful. But the point of this is actually to prevent new victims. So I asked her about, you know, men to women, all men in the database, but three women, 60% mm -hmm. uh, uh, white. Um, and the database will be released to the public tomorrow at an event at Hamlin. The hope is it's turned into a public website where people can submit information. It can be interactive and be a resource where you're in mental health for the government, for lawmakers. I was thinking of Jillian yeah. this morning because we've featured her and her mm -hmm. work on this show before. And I was thinking because I one of the one of the last times I spoke to her, one of the last mass shootings was about desensitization. Mm -hmm. What happens to us? And this morning, I think that the second most shocking thing after I read what happened in Thousand Oaks is that it wasn't my entire Twitter feed. It wasn't even the main subject. It wasn't the above the mast yeah. you know, story on many newspapers. It was the second story. The news cycle kind of moved Can on. Can you imagine? Yeah. 13 people, 12 including the gunman, 10 years ago, it would have stopped news in its tracks. And wall to wall. That's all we would have talked about. And now we've moved on several stories on our feeds or whatnot. And so stay horrified, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was college night 
at that bar in Thousand Oaks. It was packed with young people, a generation who has grown up learning to barricade the doors, hide under the tables. For them, these kinds of shootings have never been rare. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, a Great Mills High School, Santa Fe High School, shooting after shooting after shooting, it's damaging. If it can happen there, like it can definitely happen here. I feel like it's so ingrained in American culture. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow night on right on a special here on CARE 11 News, breaking the news. It is a story about the students who ha that have lived through gun violence. They're going to have honest and candid conversations about what that has been like, and they're going to talk about their push for change. That special again will be here tomorrow night on breaking the news at 630. But